It was Friday afternoon. Jesus was dead. The executioners had done their job. The cross was used to kill the Messiah. The hope of mankind seemed to be overcome by the powers of hell and the shadow of a grave. But this world was made for more than darkness, shadows, and hopelessness. Instead of killing hope, the cross was the catalyst for salvation. The tomb that was carved to hold death in its grip was burst open by the power of God. That's the way God is. Nothing is impossible with Him. He is always restoring, always renewing, always taking things meant for evil and turning them for good. He takes graves and turns them into gardens. He never gives up on His purposes. He never gives up on His plans. And He never gives up on you. He has resurrection power in the midst of every dark shadow and every threatening grave. He is not dead, no. He is surely alive. And because he lives, we can live. Make sure he hears your heart. It is so good to be with you this morning. Um, welcome to Top Fun Ranch and welcome to Anchor Church. Um, several of you have maybe driven past here before and you've wondered what all those zebra and elk and animals, how many of y'all have driven past here and now that you've wondered what's here before, you kind of know? Um, well, what you don't know is there are a couple, there's an amazing family that lives here and I'm not gonna embarrass them too bad, but the, the Neville family and Neville Stone Company, they they own this property and have been a big part of Anchor Church from the very beginning. And um, one of the daughters of, of my Mike Neville, uh, uh, Celeste Gwynn is, um, and her husband Andrew and their family um, were part of the, the founding of, of Anchor. And then we met the rest of the family, and we're all just family. So I want you right now just to put your hands together in gratitude for the, the Neville family, the Gwynn family, the Top Fun Ranch crew allowing us to come out here and... Um, and, uh, and Paul Paul Neville is, I won't embarrass him too bad, but he is a, he is a pioneer in the faith. He's like a John Wayne slash Billy Graham. I mean, how many of y'all like a man like that, you know? And uh, he, is at, he has launched and been a part of launching um, over 20 congregations in Africa and Kenya. And some of our team are going over there in just the next couple of weeks um, to dedicate two brand new buildings that have been built. And so we honor you, Mike Neville and Paul Paul Neville. Thank you for coming. This is a powerful day for you and for us just to have you here. We honor you. We're very grateful for you. How many of y'all are grateful for the worship team as well? Um, yesterday, there was nothing but grass on this hill and an awning and a team of ants just got to busy together, putting together every single one of those hundred something plus LED panels on the, on the right and left and the staging. And we're here rehearsing to about nine o'clock last night. And so praise God for the praise and worship team and the vocalists. And um, I could have just kept on going. It was very, very special. Well, today is um, it's about the Lord, and you know that, and I know that, and I want to go ahead and dive right into reading Scripture with you and get right into the message. So if you got a Bible, look at Mark chapter 16, and uh, Mark chapter 16, it's in verse 5, and I encourage you to go ahead and read at some point in time the entire chapter, chapter um, 16, verse 1 through 20, but I'm going to camp out on just a couple of verses with you this morning, and um, starting at verse 5, it says this, as they entered the tomb, and this is a few women, got up really, really early. They rushed to the tomb. They're full of shock and awe and dread and fear. They saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side. Now, I've been to Israel 15 times. I've been inside what they believe is a replica or maybe even a, a common tomb where Jesus may have been buried. And you can literally walk in there and you see a stone rolled out from in front of the tomb and you can walk in and see an entire like stone bench. What they'd do is they'd wrap that body up in linen and they would balm it with these, this, the, the, these um, fragrances to keep the body from stinking and usually after two days or three days, the body starts to smell. And they were going there to finish preparing his body for burial, to honor him, to anoint his body, which would have been a very, very disturbing experience for them alone. But they showed up at the grave. They walked inside of the tomb because they saw an angel, not just a man. It was an angel that was appearing as a messenger. And he says this, don't be alarmed. Now, listen, only an angel... <laughs> 
<laughs> can stand at a graveside and say, don't be alarmed. Hey, don't, don't worry. He, did, he just transferred from this body to a glorified body. No big deal. Death's not a big deal. It's way better on the other side. That's kind of what he's saying. Don't be alarmed. You're looking for Jesus the Nazarene, the human who was crucified, but he's risen. He's not here. See the place where they laid him, but go and the word tell here, I want you to pay attention to. When I say tell, you say invite. Ready? Tell, tell, tell. When he's saying tell, he's saying go and invite people to come experience life on the other side of the grave. Go let somebody know that this world's not their home. You're just passing through. Just let them know. Go tell his disciples and Peter. Why does it say and Peter? We'll talk about that in a second. He's going ahead of you into Galilee, and there you will see him just as he told you. Trembling and bewildered, which means confused, mind blown, shocked. The women went out and fled the tomb. I mean, it's like walking into your house at six o'clock in the morning after you just went to go get some bread from Walmart and there's like a big, huge dude in your door telling you it's not your house anymore. I mean, you're freaking out. That's, they're freaking out. They went out and fled the tomb and they said nothing to anyone. When I say tell, you say invite. Tell, tell. Where would we be if no one had ever spoken hope to anyone. What if this really was the end of Mark 20, 16? Because right there in your Bible, in my Bible too, there's a little footnote, and I want you to look at it. It says the earliest manuscripts, which means the most ancient documents, the recording of scriptures that we have, the most ancient ones and some other ancient witnesses do not have verse 19 through 20. So here's my question. What if the gospel of Mark ended with this phrase? Trembling and bewildered, the women went out and fled from the tomb, and they said nothing to anyone because they were afraid. <laughs> Where would you be had no one shared the invitation of Easter with you? This morning, I want to share a message with you called the Easter Invitation. If you're taking notes, just jot down a couple of thoughts. And I, I'm going to say some things this morning, but what's most important on a day like this is what you sense in your own heart. The little whisper that you hear beyond the elk, beyond the noise, beyond the food, beyond the wind, beyond the kids, the, the simple whisper. That's all I want you to listen for today is that whisper from heaven. Father, in Jesus name, I pray you come and speak to your people. You love them more than I do. You love them more than they love themselves. They came to hear from you today, not a man. And so, Lord, we ask you to speak. Word of God, speak in Jesus name. Amen and amen. Well, I've gotten several invitations in my life, and some invitations have been so powerful that the moment I read the invitation, it changed my entire attitude. I remember in 2017, I got an invitation to go to Cancun, and I will embarrass her. Celeste Gwynn had turned 40 that year, and we celebrated from March till October. I mean, it was a big old long, like, birthday celebration. And my wife and I got invited to go to Cancun with them. And I'm, they're friends. Like, I have some covering over my abs. Are y'all with me? Like, I have some soft covering. Some of y'all call that fat. I call it covering. Insulation for cold days like this. And But all of their friends, like, have abs, and there's not a whole lot of covering on their body. So I get invited to go to Cancun. That invitation, like, changed my whole demeanor. I mean, I went from 276 pounds to 220 pounds because I didn't want to be the white, bald preacher at the beach who's, like, 50 pounds overweight. And everybody's like, hey, thank God for him. He makes me look skinny. I didn't want to be that guy. So like the, the invitation alone put me on a workout plan. It put me on a diet. It put me on a, a tan. I'm like, I'm going to go tan, man. And so I, then I got another invitation because she had won a trip, a couple of trips to, to Maui. And she invited my wife and I to go to Maui. And I'm like, dude, I can't just get ready for the, the July Cancun trip. I got to stay in shape for that October Maui trip. And I'm like, and then I didn't know that I was going to get an invitation to surf. And brother can't surf. Like I'm, I can say surfboard, but I can't stand up on one. You know what I mean? So like, I'm like getting my abs ready. The invitation alone started to set my expectation of how I should live between now and the day of the invitation. 
I got another invitation. I'll show it to you this past week. And this is a powerful invitation. This invitation was so strong. I got it in email and I knew it was so strong when I read down through it and I saw the names. I blotted the names out because I don't want to, you'll, you'll understand why in a second. It says, you've been invited along with a small group of pastors and leaders for a special day and a half with, and it's the pastor of the largest church in America, one of the most influential churches in America, and a, and a, a real well-known business leader that's going to be there. A lot of you would know if I mentioned their names. And I thought, it's designed to be intentionally intimate and effective. This will be a time of one-on-one -on -one connection and personal development. We will discuss things like personal health, leadership, church growth, mental health, finances, and more. I didn't click the RSVP button at the bottom. Go ahead and go to the next slide. These are the details. Private dinner at the pastor's house. Like, I'm like, this is not like a makeup. hundred people didn't get this invite. This is a selective personal invite. And I'm starting to think, they think I'm awesome. Oh yeah. And broke because I saw the price tag at the bottom and it was like a $20,000 price tag. And I'm like, that's a fundraiser. But anyway, let me let you know that invitation before I saw the price tag. And I'll show you that in just a second. It actually made me so excited. I thought I need to pray more. <laughs> I need to like, I need to like read the word more. I need to like, I'm humbled. I, the invitation changed me. So I want to share with you today, three parts of your Easter invitation, three parts of your Easter invitation. The first part is your RSVP. It's your RSVP. Now I don't like, like, I mean, I, I like that all y'all showed up. Everybody like this wave at everybody around you that showed up today. All right. But we, when we saw how many people were like RSVP in, you know, we we're like, this is, we, we have to get more chairs. We have to set up some blankets. I don't know who I was going to come. Cause we started off thinking like 200 people, then 300 people, then 400 people, then 500 people, then 600 people signed up, plus the kids, the grandmas. And there's somebody to text and say, Hey, I got like eight people coming with me. The, the reason people ask you to RSVP is not so they can prepare the place for you. It's so that your heart can start getting ready for where you're going. You see, Jesus said in John 14, I'm going to prepare a place for you, which means he has you in mind in heaven right now. He's got your yard. He's got your house. He got your food. He's got, he's got you prepared. He's got your resurrection prepared. And what a big tragedy if you don't RSVP for your day. What a big tragedy if you miss out on all he has in store for you. So when I think of the RSVP, that is French. How many of y'all speak French? Everybody just say bonjour. Yeah, and everybody just say this. This is a great phrase for your kids. Ready? Ferme. La bouche. That means shut your mouth, right? So, so you practice that. Ferme la bouche. I love, you know, Little Mermaid. Les foissons, les foissons. How I love les foissons. I love to drop and serve a little fish. Ha, ha, ha. Well, that's all the French I know right there. That's it. But I'm going to teach y'all some French today. RSVP. It stands for this. Reserve, si vous play. Or responde, si vous play. That's what it stands for. Which means don't throw this in the trash. Reserve your place. Reserve your spot. I, I look at this, Mark 16 and verse 7. It says, go and tell Peter he's going ahead of you. Go tell the disciples and Peter he's going ahead of you into Galilee. And there you will see him just as he told you. Like, he's going to meet you before he ascends to heaven. Go tell the disciples and tell Peter. The problem is, and you can read this from Mark chapter 16, verse 1 through 20. Those ladies left the tomb. Watch this. And they went and told people, Jesus is raised from the dead. We, his body's not there. They didn't believe him. Come, come meet him here. Physically, come meet the physical resurrected Jesus. Now he's over there and people still wouldn't go over there knowing that she's knowing she's telling the truth. It's not like get ready to go to heaven. People didn't RSVP when he was physically present. Physically present. Now, how many of you, if I told you right now, Jesus has risen and I saw him down there at the airplane hangar, you would not stick around for the end of the message if you believed me but you would sit here and yawn if you didn't believe me. You see, I know a lot of people right now who've been to church. They've been around Christianity. They've heard messages. They've heard sermons. They've heard 
all of this kind of stuff. And the RSVP part is like, yeah, I did that when I was a kid. <laughs> RSVP'd when I was a kid. I raised my hand. I prayed the prayer. I hit the water. But between now and like heaven, it's not working out so good. There's got to be more than the RSVP. What if there's not? What if the RSVP right now is stronger than just an invitation? What if it's a call for you right now to move from death to life right now? What if it's a call from you to move from seeing trees to seeing Jesus right now? You see, Jesus showed up and he appeared to the 11 disciples. These are the guys who hung out with him every day for three years. They saw him walk on water. They saw him heal blind eyes. They saw him raise the dead. They saw him speak in powerful ways and change the reality. They saw him cast devils after devils after devils out of people. And at the resurrection, Jesus shows up on Easter Sunday, maybe a few days later, about eight days later to be exact. He shows up and to the 11 and they were eating. And he rebuked them for their lack of faith and their stubborn refusal to RSVP. You see, Jesus cares about your real RSVP. You see, they were gathered because they were afraid of the Jews, but they weren't gathering with eyes to see Jesus. So let me ask you this. Have you really RSVP'd? Have you really transferred from believing that Jesus exists to receiving him into your heart? I, I want to um, share the story about Lazarus. We sang that song, now I ran out of that grave. You're like, I ain't never ran out of a grave, but that would be cool. <laughs> it, 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 it will be cool for you. It won't be cool if you don't RSVP. It won't. You don't want to be anywhere near a grave if you have not RSVP. There's a place prepared for you. You've got to RSVP. You see, Lazarus was dead. He'd been dead for four days. The King James, how many of y'all like the old King James version of the Bible? The Bible, the King James version said that, um, go, go ahead and go to the next. Yeah. He said, Jesus said to the, to the ladies at the tomb where Lazarus was buried, I am resurrection and the life. And he who believes in me or he who RSVPs, though he may die, he shall live. Which means the RSVP actually guarantees you that you're going to live on the other side of the grave. It guarantees you. Lazarus had already been in the grave for a long time. And this is what the Bible says. It says that now when he had said these things, go ahead to the next verse. Now, when he had said these things, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. I heard an old preacher say one time, the reason he said Lazarus come forth is because if Jesus said come forth anywhere near a tombstone, everybody's coming out of the grave. You know what I'm saying? He said Lazarus just to let everybody know only Lazarus come out today. You called my name, and I ran out of that grave, out of the darkness, into your glorious name. That's the RSVP. The RSVP is for you to hear his voice saying, come out. You see, because you're not just registering for a place you're going, you are declining where you don't want to be. And where you don't want to be is separated from God. Where you don't want to be is in the pit of your own shame, depression, isolation, doubt, confusion, divorce, separation, anxiety, all kinds of, you don't want to be in that grave, not even now. And the RSVP says, I don't just want to come to you, Jesus. I want out. I'm coming out today. So the first part of your invitation, your Easter invitation is the RSVP. That's the easy part. Everybody say, uh-oh. The hard part is the rehearsal. This is your rehearsal. How many of y'all like wedding rehearsals? I mean, it's like, come on, the bride and the groom, they're like, I want to get married. I do. I just don't want to go to the rehearsal. You know what I'm saying? I've, been, I've done some really crazy weddings where rehearsals show up. And like, I mean, your, your cousin who's, who's a bridesmaid, your other cousin who's a groom. I mean, they had a few too many drinks before the rehearsal. You got the poor wedding coordinator. This is a wedding chapel, by the way. And there's been a lot of weddings here. And I can imagine the rehearsal. Everybody's like, I want to just go eat. I want to go drink. I want to go have fun. I don't want to do the rehearsal. Every groomsman in Northeast Texas stands in rehearsal like this. The bride starts coming. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. 
when we get to leave here. We're boring. You see, the hardest part about the rehearsal is this. The rehearsal is practice. Did you know that? Let me ask you this. You may not know this. Did you know that life is practice? Life is heaven practice. Which means the only way to practice heaven correctly is to have eyes to see heaven. That's what the RSVP is about. It's about getting your eyes shifted from this world to God. And when you see Jesus, you're like, I I don't have a YouTube video for how to follow Jesus. I don't have enough TikTok tricks to actually follow Jesus. I don't have a a little 30-second little spoon dance for how to follow Jesus. I'm RSVPing, but how do I practice him? Now, y'all might know by my physique that I'm not a golfer, all right? But I do like to play golf. I enjoy playing golf. I used to play every dry Friday over 40. When I first started playing golf, I, 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 I used wood, like literally wooden driver, a wooden driver. Like I, I didn't play woods, like iron woods. I played woods and I could never hit a golf ball before. And I'd had no practice. That's how some of y'all feel following Jesus. You're like, I RSVP, but I sure don't know how to live. <laughs> Cause I got, I got said yes to Jesus, but I, I, man, my marriage is a mess. My emotions are a mess. And I watch Tiger Woods, but I mean, whenever I swing, it's like, you know, I'm, I don't know how to swing. I don't even know how to hold a club. Now, there's the biggest challenge for some of y'all. How many of y'all, just raise your hand, you played baseball in Little League. Raise your hand. If you, and they taught you how to hold a bat. And you're like, I can hold a bat. And you got your bat and you got your stance and you're like, you try to do the same thing in golf. And you're like, I don't know why, but my bat swing don't work the same in, ba- in golf as my, my golf. I'm trying to swing a golf club like I swing a bat and I'm like, line it up like that. It don't work. The bad part about golf is that every single muscle in your body matters. Your feet matter. Your knees matter. Your hands matter. Your arm matters. Your back, all of that, like all of, all of that. I ain't going to do any more because I don't want to show you how good I am at golf. Like, I mean, you, you never, you don't see, y'all don't want to see it, don't you? I don't want to break anything. I don't want to split my pants either. So I'm going to golf. One time I was playing in a golf tournament with Andrew Gwynn and Papa Mike Neville. They had a toilet bowl shot. Now, you know your golf's bad if you sit down on a toilet, like on hole 16, and you try to hit the ball sitting on a toilet. Like, I never, I couldn't do it. I mean, I hit the ball like this. I swung back as hard as I could. I hit the ball, and there was a guy videoing right here, and the ball hit his camera lens. There's some things I can do in golf, but if you change the environment, I'm not really good at it. I want you to understand the rehearsal is following Jesus. It is practicing Jesus. And some of you have said, yeah, I said yes to Jesus. I said I wanted to follow Jesus. I said I wanted to go to heaven. But I RSVP'd, but I don't know if I'm actually going to show up. I don't know if I'm going to make it. Because practice is hard. And I don't know where to stand. I don't know the rules. I don't know how to handle fear. I don't like it when people in my life die. I don't like it when people in my life get sad. I don't like it when my kids that I raise and I teach get addicted. I don't like how hard practice is. And man, I'm going to show you how how difficult it was for me with this invitation. Because when I got the invitation and I saw this, go ahead and show the next part. Roundtable. We are so excited that you'll be joining us in heaven. (laughs) This exclusive roundtable experience with on May 4th and 5th. To register, please follow the sign-up process below to pay your initial deposit. I was like, what? Please know that the cost to attend is a recommended gift of $5,000 to $10,000, and your $2,500 deposit will go towards your desired gift total. We would love for your spouse to attend. Come on, you can invite one more person, but there's going to be an additional $2,500 for your spouse. And I just like... I sent the green face vomit emoji to all my friends who had seen it. I was like, I want to go to heaven, but I don't want to live like Jesus. I want to go to heaven, but I don't want to pay the price to trust him with my soul. I want to be raised from the dead, but I don't really want to do all this spiritual, emotional, get to know Jesus, pray with my eyes closed, envision heaven, sing with my head. I don't want to do all that. I just want to have fun and then go to heaven. How many of y'all are like, I thought that before. How many of y'all are like, that would be cool. Like, have fun, go to heaven without dying. That would be even better. 
This next month and a half, two months, we're doing a series called Flourish at Anchor. And I know everybody that wants fruit on their trees. Everybody wants a beautiful garden. How many of y'all looked out here and you got a vision of what you would do if you had 100 acres? Oh, I want some elk. I want some trees. I want, I want my trees trimmed at 15 feet across the entire property with scissors. Like, I want all that. <laughs> I want a lake. Come on with a, with a, I want that. I want a, I want a flourishing life. I want, I want a foot. You're looking for external fruit, but I'm telling you right now, you're going to discover in this next two months, your fruit is dependent upon your roots. Roots determine fruits. The roots of Mike Neville, who started Neville Stone Company and all those things, the children are now like leaves growing on the tree. There's fruit in season and out of season. We're, we're going into the roots Your roots are your trust system. Do you have trust issues with God? Do you have trust issues with authority? Do you have trust issues with your spouse? Do you have trust issues with your kids? Do you have trust issues with races, with politicians? Do you have trust issues? Your roots are the sign of your trust issues. And we're going into this this next couple of months at Anchor. I want to show you one verse all of you have read before you know it. It's the Lord's Prayer. This is heaven practice. This is the rehearsal. When Jesus says, this is how to pray, what he's saying is, this is how to practice heaven. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Is that it? That is the rehearsal prayer. You're like, but there's a lot of clubs in here. There's a lot of clubs in here. It's not about how perfect, how you perfect the swing. It's about who you go to. What you're like, is there a YouTube video for how to actually in Father in heaven? How holy is your name? Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That's a big one. Like, how do I live? How do I live? How do I live? That's the word of God. We want to walk with you through that. The third part of your Easter imitation is your resurrection. It's your resurrection. We want you to RSVP. We want to help you with practice, and we all need practice. None of us are perfect, but our Jesus is, and his word is perfect. It's enduring. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. It penetrates the dividing soul and spirit, joint and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of our heart. Everything in all creation is laid bare before the word of God. The word of God is perfect in every way. You get that in your heart. You get a dose of that every day. You get relationship. Our Father who art in heaven, holy is your name. And what happens is he begins to change your spirit as he changes your eyes. But a Eventually, you are going to die. Eventually, it's your day. Eventually, it's your resurrection day. In Acts chapter 26 and verse 8, it says, Why, as though is though incredible, why is it? I don't know what that says right there. Like that's like off somehow. Why is it incredible by any of you that God raises the dead? I mean, how many of y'all would like to have been hanging out with the angel before the ladies showed up? Raise your hand if that's you. Like, that would have been cool. Like, sit, like sitting there, maybe you got to fold the linen garment. Hey, so what are you going to do? 
Well, when they walk in, I'm going to go, glory, or I'm going to go, I'm an angel, you're a human, or I'm going to go, hey, 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 look at this, you know, stop, drop, and roll, ain't going to work in hell, like I'm going to, what are you going to say, Mr. Angel? I'm going to say this. Don't be afraid of what happens before this tomb. Don't be afraid of what happens in this tomb. And don't be afraid of what happens on the other side of this tomb. Don't be afraid. Why are you going to say that? He'd say, oh, human beings, they're different. Why are they different? They think this is home. (laughs) They think this is all there is. They think that once they die, the best is not ahead. They get really, really, really sad to lose somebody because they just don't know how good it is on the other side. We all are homesick. We all are longing for home. We all are longing for our resurrection. I'm just telling you, don't you miss yours. Don't miss yours. I'll look at this, this next verse. Romans 8 verse 11 says, If the Spirit, come on, read it out loud with me with a great, come on, Anna, Texas voice right here. If the Spirit of Him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, you are SVP, He lives inside of you. He, come on with me, He who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will, come on, not maybe, not might, He will, come on, read with me, will also give life to your mortal bodies through His Spirit who dwells in you. Here's my favorite part. One of these days, this is going to be your wedding. Go ahead. This is you and Jesus. Your parents and your family Are they going to be there? Your friends and your relatives, are they going to be there? Those that you have influenced all over the world, they're going to be there. On the the groom's side, that's on the bride's side. I I need to change the colors. Y'all can go color however you want to, but today, but you know what I'm saying, right? So right here, on the other side is the apostles and the saints. Hebrews chapter 12 calls them a great cloud of witnesses, which means there are spiritual forces. There are angels. There are people that have already gone before you cheering you on. Get your eyes on Jesus. Get your eyes on home. Get your heart in heaven. Get your soul right. Get the revelation of the resurrection from the dead inside of your spirit. Don't live for this world alone. It's pretty, but it is not Eden. It is pretty, but it is not heaven. It looks good, but it's all going to fade right now. Get your soul fixed. They're cheering that the patriarchs of the faith the heroes of heaven so it's just a simple question for you today have you rsvp do you need help with the rehearsal are you looking forward to your resurrection come on bow your heads and close your eyes right there where you are and i want to ask you i know this there's there's distractions around but i feel your focus i sense your focus your focus today And right now in this place, I'm not asking you, did you pray a prayer when you were a kid? I'm not asking you any of that kind of stuff. I'm asking you, do you need a fresh start today? Are you ready to come home? Are you ready to focus your eyes on Jesus? Are you ready to, maybe for some of you, you're like, listen, I I, I, I am, but I'm I'm scared to. Like, I'm scared to like give my heart to Jesus. Why? because I'm afraid I'm going to have to change my rehearsal. Don't rehearse hell. Don't rehearse hell. Don't rehearse death. Don't rehearse depression. Don't rehearse anxiety. Come out of the grave. Come out of that grave. Come out of that grave. Come out of that grave. Don't rehearse depression. Don't rehearse anxiety. Come out of that grave. And if you're in a place right now where you know right now, Jesus, I want to give you my heart and my life, my full attention, my whole heart. On the count of three, I bold you. Nobody's looking around. I want you to boldly just raise your hand and say, Lord, I want to give you my life today. On the count of three, one, two, three, raise your hand. Be bold. I see your hands all over. Be bold and courageous. This is my RSVP moment. This is it right here. This is where you transition from death to life. This is where your spirit man goes from dead to alive. This is where everything changes. Just say this out loud from your heart. Lord Jesus, 
Today, I believe you are the resurrected son of God. Say it. Let your mouth speak it. Today, I believe you are the resurrected son of God. I believe you know me. I believe you are raised from the dead. Today, I confess you are Lord. I believe in my heart that God raised you from the dead. And today, I give you my life. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for cleansing me. I trust you with my life. Now, Lord, I need a lot of help with the rehearsal. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Put your hands together for Jesus. He is so good. He's so worthy. Let's stand together. Come on, I want to finish today with a good, strong, just singing. This is a good, strong singing from your heart. There's a great voice. When Jesus reached into that tomb of Lazarus, when he saw what Lazarus was buried in, he said, get those grave claws off, clothes off of that boy. And right now, come on, lift your hands. He wants to get your grave claws off of you. He wants to get depression off of you. Anxiety and bitterness and unforgiveness, resentment and addiction. It's time for you right now to run out of your grave. RSVP straight into the presence of Jesus. Come on, let's praise him. Amen. Anybody got a reason to praise God now?